Hello, I'm Kendall House and welcome back again. In this presentation we're going to look at a mathematical model called Hamilton's Rule. And everything we've been doing in these presentations this week has been leading up to this. So this is where the real excitement happens. I hope you enjoy it. This presentation is called What is Hamilton's Rule? So we've talked about Darwin's special puzzle, and this had to do with ants and why it was that those worker ants worked so hard when they didn't have an opportunity to reproduce. Why didn't the worker ants just go on strike and say, hey, you get to reproduce, uh, you do all the work. Well, Hamilton had a solution to this question. This is the solution to altruism. And he said that such altruism can evolve when R times B is greater than C. So that inequality is Hamilton's rule. It's a simple mathematical model with just three terms in it. And that's the model that we're going to discuss in this presentation. So let's define the terms in our model. We're going to start with the letter B. And B refers to the reproductive benefit to the recipient of an altruistic act. And our interest is reproductive fitness. So everything that we're talking about here, we're talking about in terms of reproductive fitness. Now the second term to define then is C. And C refers to the reproductive cost to the altruistic donor. And what this means is that this is just a cost-benefit analysis. We're just saying that the benefit has to be greater than the cost. But there's this third term in here, and that's R. So what does R mean? Well, R is called the coefficient of relatedness. And this has to do with how closely related the altruist is to the recipient. So we've been discussing this in terms of purple and blue in our other presentations. And we've said that purple is the altruist in this relation and blue is the recipient. So in our model then, blue turned green with benefit and purple turned red with cost and that was an altruistic act. But now we're introducing this third term here and we're asking, were they closely related? And if they were, does this change the nature of that act? And Hamilton says, yes, it does. So here's a simple definition of R. R is just a number between zero and one. So if a recipient is unrelated to you, R is gonna equal zero. And if a recipient is a clone of you, R is equal to 1, because your relatedness to yourself is 1. So most of the time here, we're going to be talking about relatedness that's going to be between 1 and 0. It's going to be some fraction. And for example, your relatedness to your own child is 1 half, and that's because they get half of their DNA from you. And your relatedness to your grandchild is 1 quarter. So let's rewrite Hamilton's rule and move everything over here uh, to the left of the inequality. So now we have R times B minus C has to be greater than zero. So the first step that we take is we multiply the benefit by the relatedness of the two individuals, and then we subtract the cost. So here's a simple example. Your daughter, we said, has a 50% probability of sharing a gene with you, and so low does your full sister. So genetically, your sister is as close to you as your daughter. Well, what does that mean? One thing it means is that your niece or nephew, uh, the child of your sister, has a 25% of sharing that same gene. So now, as we start to get these calculations of relatedness, we can start comparing them. Two nieces, in terms of the likelihood of sharing a gene with you, are equivalent to one daughter. Three nieces have a greater likelihood of, of carrying forward a gene that's shared with you than does one daughter. 
So here's the math on this. We said R times B minus C has to be greater than zero. Well, your relatedness to those three nieces is 0.25, so we're going to multiply that by three. And your relatedness to your own daughter is 0.5. So you have the one daughter times 0.5. So we multiply that, we get 0.75 minus 0.5, and that gives us 0.25, which indeed is greater than zero. And that just tells us, again, that three nieces have a greater likelihood of carrying forward a gene that's shared with you than does one daughter. And what does this mean? Well, Hamilton said, genetically, what this means is that you can benefit more by helping your sister raise three nieces than by raising one daughter of your own. And you're probably wondering, well, does gender matter? Does it have to be your sister, your niece, and your daughter? And the answer is no. Gender doesn't matter at all. We could mix this up in any way. But it could be your brother and his nieces and his son. It could, we could switch the genders around however we want, and nothing changes. So here's a photo. These are three nephews that someone stuck on Flickr, right, and said, here's my three nephews, and here's a photo of someone's daughter that they also stuck up there on Wikipedia. And so let's imagine this is your daughter, and she's out there saying, hey, what about me? Because suddenly you've studied Hamilton's rule and you said, hey, I'd do better off if I help my sibling raise their children than if I have a child of my own. So this requires taking a gene's eye view. And this means that your genetic interest embraced not just your own direct offspring, but also your nieces and nephews and further out your cousins and second cousins, all weighted by their relatedness to you. And this is what Hamilton then called inclusive fitness. So let's return to the altruistic corner of Hamilton's social universe where we had purple uh, acting in an altruistic manner with relation to blue. And we said, well, purple benefits blue. And as a result, purple is harmed. So... As a result of that, purple's direct reproductive success declines. But what about purple's inclusive fitness? So we're going to look at this same relationship here and this same act, but now we're going to introduce relatedness between purple and blue. So what is the coefficient of relatedness? Well, it depends on what the relationship is, and we're going to say that purple and blue are siblings. And in fact, we're going to say that blue is the sister of purple and keep this right in line with our prior example. So that means that R equals 0.5 between them. And let's say that the cost of purple again, that purple, instead of going off and marrying her love of her life, she stayed and helped her sister. And if Purple had gone off and married the love of her life, she would have had one son. But instead, she stayed and helped her sister, who otherwise would have had nothing but tumult in her life and no children. But with Purple's assistant, uh, Blue was able to raise three sons. So the cost to Purple was one son. The benefit to Blue was three sons. So we know that Purple's direct reproductive success declined. It declined by one offspring. But we have to ask about Purple's inclusive fitness. And we know that it increased because we've already done the math. And as a result of this, what looked like altruism when we first looked at it turns out to be cooperation. And here's why. By helping her sibling, Purple gained three nephews. The cost of purple was one son. And we've already said that three nephews have a greater probability of carrying forward a gene that's shared with purple than that one, that, that one son would. But now let's look at it from Blue's perspective. Blue gained three sons that she would have been unable to conceive and raise without the assistance of her helpful sister. And the cost of Blue was one nephew. All right, so the three nephews of purple are the three sons of blue. The one son of purple that was lost is the one nephew of blue. It turns out that they both came out better as a result 
of this act of cooperation and our altruism has suddenly turned into cooperation between close relatives. And this was later called by John Maynard Smith, another evolutionary biologist, kin selection. And the idea behind kin selection is that social cooperation can evolve as close genetic kin assist one another. And another aspect of this, then, is that altruism among close genetic kin is often, in fact, genetic self-interest disguised. So this gives us an explanation of altruism that turns altruism into cooperation. But if this is true, then it suggests that close genetic relatedness should be fundamental to social life among animals, and that should include humans. And that's what we're going to be exploring more about. Thank you for listening.